In this video, we're going to be looking at how this photo went from this to this. So I'm going to get started with this image, which is the straight out of the camera version. There's no settings applied. I'm going to tone it in Lightroom before we export to Photoshop. Using my Pop Candy presets, I'm going to see which base I like. And we're going to go with doesn't matter too much. I, I like cotton candy, but I, hmm, I I know before I edited this whole series with jelly bean. So to keep it consistent, I'm gonna go with jelly bean. Um, okay, this I haven't done an editing tutorial in a while, and I forgot that it removes the lens correction. So first step, apply the preset, and second step, apply the lens correction. Um, and as you can see, because this is a raw file the lens correction, the profile was automatically detected as Sigma 24 to 105, and that's the lens I was using. And this was shot at 51 focal length, 4.0 aperture, and a very fast shutter speed. It was a very bright day. So one quick disclaimer is if we zoom in, this photo is actually very out of focus, and that's not ideal, but uh, there were no other shots of this composition that worked, so I just wanted to make this one work. And for most purposes, uh, no one's gonna notice. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of sharpening to kind of fake it. So uh, I believe in photography. It's not about perfection. It's about, you know, doing your best and sometimes you miss it. And if it was for a client, that's kind of a different story. You can't really justify, justify a blurry image to a client but uh, in this case, it's for my portfolio and, you know, we're going to run with it. So I'm going to start tweaking these settings. I like to have really lifted shadows to get that low contrast look. But I also want to preserve his skin tone and make sure other parts aren't looking too bright. And as you can tell, if I press the slash key, uh, this is pretty decently exposed. It's not super underexposed, not overexposed. All the highlights and shadows are intact. So typically I underexpose a little bit, but in this case it was a pretty perfect exposure by the books. Um, I am going to decrease it a little bit. And right now, again, I'm just looking for toning. I don't really care about this because I'm going to get rid of it and other distractions as well. What I do care about is that this red wall looks more orange and more saturated and a little darker. So it started out more of a crimson. Now we're bringing it more to the orange side, which as I've said in past situations, tomato red slash orange is my ultimate favorite color in photos. And just want to get the contrast right. All right, and we're pretty close to being in Photoshop. Um, one thing I like to do as I'm working with a series is use reference mode and drag one photo here to compare it. And as I can see, uh, the red is still a little bit too red. So I can increase the overall warmth. Uh, maybe we need a bit more red of a shadow. So shadows, this is adding it to the dark, I mean, theoretically the darkest parts of the photo. It kind of goes to all of the photo, but um, it's theoretically distinguished by the brightest parts and the darkest parts. And by default, this is set to red. Um, and by increasing the number, I'm just increasing the percent of saturation. So uh, we just want like that nice warm feeling, but if we get too warm, it starts to look like, you know, a certain type of film that has that really magenta hue to it. And we don't want that in this case, at least that's not my vibe. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at 15 and make the red a bit more orange. Let's go with 40 and maybe desaturate it even more. So that matches pretty well. The sky is matching decently well, might be a little bit more to the aqua side than we want. And uh, let's see what's going on with the yellow. So I'm just going to desaturate it quite a bit because, well, we don't care about that, but I just want the wall to match. 
actually the wall doesn't even matter because I'm going to be changing the color. So whatever. But I, I know when I was editing these, I copied and pasted. So for the sake of matching, I'm just going to try to get it as close as possible. All right. So that's looking pretty good. Again, it's out of focus, but oh well. <laughs> and we're going to go to right click, right click the photo in the thumbnail, edit in Photoshop. All right, so basically the first step I do, no matter what I'm doing, is create a background copy. And the first thing I want to do is eliminate these distractions. There's a few ways to do this. A spot healing brush tool is one where it's kind of smart and just senses what you need versus like picking your clone source of material. But it can be slow. That did a pretty good job. Let me show you my other technique, which is just to select very loosely, hold down shift to select another thing, right click, fill, content aware. I know that seems more complicated, but for some reason it just seems to work better. Um, and I don't think anyone would really notice that this line doesn't keep going, but if I wanted, I could just use the stamp tool, make sure the hardness is low. It doesn't have to be zero, but low and just extend that line a little so it looks more natural or I could get rid of all the lines but I don't want to do that I'm gonna select this again oops the only thing with this is sometimes you mess up the selection really easily because it's hand done um, just okay see that made a little ripple which it's not the end of the world but in this case it's a good teaching moment because I'm gonna do a clone stamp instead and I'm gonna make this a little bit harder so we get um, less feathering on the edges and I'm holding down option to set the source and I picked like the straightest edge um, and then I'm just gonna extend that right there so those distractions are very easily gone anytime something is just isolated within a large swath of color or texture it's a very easy removal but if it overlaps with anything important, then that's where you have issues. So um, now I wanted to make this just like a full sky backdrop versus this like parking lot and tree. So to do that, I'm going to go to quick select, which is W. And I'm just going to select, oops, I have this layer hidden. I'm just going to select all of the sky and the tree and this section. In this case, I really did want to use the quick select tool versus the pen tool, which I'm going to show you later, because I want to get this kind of organic edge preserved. And you can see that it's really like, you know, the red starts here and it's not perfect. And I didn't want a perfect straight edge because that gets rid of the authenticity. We want to make people believe that there is actually full blue sky and not that I just crafted a perfect wall edge. Okay, so now that I have this selected, I'm going to just make sure these little nubs are gone. Just getting as much of the greenery gone as possible. And we don't really care about this stuff up here, so I'm just going to let it be. Um, and now uh, quick select is still highlighted. And if it wasn't, you just need to be on any tool that lets you have select and mask. Um, and I go here almost every time I make a selection to make sure the edges are smooth and not jagged and we can add some feathering and refine the edges and a bunch of other fun stuff. In this case, let me zoom in. Um, let me make this even more obvious. So the darker stuff is not selected. And as you can see, there's like a little bit of jaggedness. The smooth function will help it look more natural because we don't want it to look pixelated or computerized. And it takes a while to go back to dark because my computer is kind of slow. Um, and I usually do like 20 to 30 of smoothing and then like depending on what it is, um, half to two pixels of feathering, unless it's like super blurred out in the background and we want um, a really blurred edge. And then you could shift the edge, like move it one way or the other. Okay, that took like a thousand years, but you can see it, it extended the edge in and doing it the opposite way would extend it out. 
it's useful sometimes, but I'm just going to leave it at zero. Okay, so now I don't really care that there's this red here. Um, I'm just going to like let it be painted over if that's what happens. The selection is looking good. It's smooth and it's feathered. And it's not the most obvious thing in this case. How, you can't really see exactly how smooth it is, but just trust me that you want to smooth out to 20 to 30 and feather it a little bit. Before you click, okay, I have it, um, I have it set to output to selection. And before you click OK, like if you make any change and your computer is slow, it won't have actually changed it. Like if the black goes away for a second, like that, you need to wait until it comes back until you click OK, because sometimes it, you think you selected and masked and then you didn't and it's confusing. So it's now selected because I had it output to selection and I'm just going to copy and paste that uh, before we fix it um, so that I could theoretically get rid of it in the future. So um, I'm going to select it again because we want to have that boundary in place to do some cloning. And to start with, I'm just going to um, clone out the upper branches with some of these clouds. And honestly, when I did this the first time without thinking I would be showing anyone this technique, I was not like being super careful about it. I kind of just did it randomly and it worked out. So let me see if I can <laughs> recreate that same effect. Okay, and then at a certain point, and again, super soft edges, I mean, it could be even softer. Soft edges are really important right here because we want a really wispy, organic cloud. Um, and then, so our selection is acting as kind of a container, like I can go here and it's not gonna spill over the other side. So that's why we wanted to spend that time, oops, making sure that the selection was adequate and precise and from here down it's i am pretty sure when i actually did this i just brushed in the color um, because as you can tell skies have a natural gradient and up here it's darker down here it's lighter so i can just eye drop this and paint it with the brush um, and I'm going to make sure it's 100% because we want to cover that tree in that parking lot. And so the thing is, brushing isn't always the best technique because it's just very flat texture. And, you know, you, you can tell that it's just like painted in digitally sometimes. But in this case, can you tell that that is a digital addition? And by the way, I did command D to deselect and I'm undoing that to get the selection back. Um, I mean, I couldn't tell if I was really studying this. I don't really see much grain up here, so I don't really need grain down here. But if I had more sky to work with, that's why it's useful to have plates. So I could maybe like add other clouds or add more blue sky without having to brush it in. But in this case, brushing it in works just fine. And let's check out that edge. So that edge looks pretty natural. There's like a tiny, tiny line here, but honestly, I would not fix that if I wasn't making a tutorial on it, but we're just gonna clone it out. And I don't think anyone would have ever noticed that, but whatever. Um, Okay, so yeah, there's like a little bit of whiteness there, but again, very subtle. And this is where maybe like extending or shifting the edge, like I showed you in the opposite direction would have been nice because it would have extended that edge out a little bit to be filled in. But anyway, no one's ever going to see any of that. So let's get on to the fun stuff. Um, that's our tree is removed, our cloud looks fairly natural, and 
Now we're going to color the walls, paint the walls, and get rid of this little patch of grass. So let's do the patch of grass first. Get that out of the way. We're using the same technique. I'm going to do a quick select to preserve that bit of a jagged edge. And it's not being perfect, but we can modify it just a little bit coming up. So I'm going to take the pen tool and it's okay if this edge is straight because it basically is straight in reality. And I say make selection, subtract from selection. And I think I do want this, this is like too dramatic of a dip. So I'm just holding down the lasso. I pressed L to get to the lasso. And let's just straighten this out a little bit. See, I still wanted it somewhat organic, but not like really jumpy. So, uh, the, oops, wrong way. I'm holding down um, option to delete and shift to add. So that's looking good. And again, we need to select and mask while we're on the background copy. Otherwise, we won't be selecting anything. And this, we're going to smooth it out and feather it slightly. In this case, this edge actually is pretty blurred because of the way the depth of field was working. So we do want it to be accurately blurred rather than like a computerized straight line. Um, and that looks good. So we're outputting to selection. Okay. Again, copying and pasting and good practice is to name your layers. I am often lazy about that. And in this case, again, we want to make a selection of, oops, I right click this and say select pixels. And I want somewhat of a gradient. Otherwise this will look too flat. And this is like a really cheating way of doing this because we're cloning a flat panel to like a ground panel, but um, it's a subtle enough area that I don't think anyone would notice. But I am choosing from dark to light. It's a subtle gradient there. And I'm just gonna stamp that in, make sure that corner's filled in. And I don't think people would really question that. I would love to know how to perspective warp a texture. Like, I guess I could select this and like a select an area and then do perspective warp or some type of warp. But I would love to know how to like fill in with a perspective. But anyway, now the real fun part. So I'm going to try to remember the colors I used or maybe I will eye drop them. So. I am going to use the pen tool here because it's just easier because we are working with mostly straight lines and I pressed P to get to the pen tool and see how this line is not perfectly crisp. It's um, fairly blurred because of the depth of field and because it's out of focus. Um, but we're just going to want to mimic that feathering. Oh, and also we want to make sure that we're not going out of bounds because we want the color to look contained within this wall and not bleeding onto the back wall. So basically, this is a fairly easy um, example of this because often you have things interfering with panels of color you want to change, but we have just a very nice, easy trapezoid here. Is that a trapezoid? I think so. And now that we have that selected, make selection. Well, we don't have a selected, we have the path drawn out. Now we're making the selection. And again, I go back to W, any selection tool and select a mask. And I'm going to smooth it out and feather it by maybe two to get that blurred line. Um, and then, so this could be a good time to use the shift edge. Like we don't want that red in there. So let's see. That got rid of some of the red. Hopefully it didn't get rid of this boundary too much. I think that's good. And we're going to output. 
copy and paste, and again, select pixels. So this is where things get fun. This is like the magic moment. So we go down here, create a hue saturation adjustment layer, and nothing happened. But we could either just start dragging things, which in this case, you aren't gonna see much of a difference because it's all one color. But if the, the thing you are selecting was multiple colors, you would wanna potentially colorize it, which just makes it all the same color without variations. Um, and in most cases I do colorize, but sometimes colorize makes things look unnaturally similar. So yeah, it's, you kind of just have to play with it. Anyway, now this is when, this is where I want to match what I've already done, which is always a little bit tricky. I know this was like a lime green. So I just opened up the edit I already did on the side just to give myself a reference point because I do want to make it look similar and I can see that it's a bit darker and a little less saturated and that's looking decently good. Now it's time for our floor. So we're going to go back to the, oh and the cool thing is you could just um, unclick this at any time and it goes back to what it was. Um, and you can always come back and change the hue later if you decided you wanted something different. So now the floor. Um, we're gonna use the pen tool again. And this is slightly curved, but not enough to make me wanna use the curvature pen tool. Also, I think I'm using the pen tool in like a really amateur way. Cause I know if you like click and drag it, it forms shapes better, but I don't know, like you're supposed to use it to like follow the curve. So yeah, I guess I'm kind of figuring out as figuring it out as I go, but I'm very stuck in my ways of, see now I have something weird. I'm stuck in my ways of just clicking along, even though it's probably gonna give me, what's that risk condition that everyone of our generation is gonna have? And I can, hold command and drag a point if it didn't really match what I wanted to do and see I'm a little bit outside of bounds. So make selection and I know I could feather there but I just go here and do it all in one step and again smoothing is to get rid of jaggedness and feathering is to blur the edge. If that's too much let's go 2.2 okay um, and again wait for it to turn back to black otherwise it won't have done anything and we're outputting oh let's uh, shift that edge a little um, copy paste command C command V wall floor okay again select pixels hue saturation adjustment layer colorize. We could have all sorts of fun with this. Um, and, you know, some colors are not going to look natural for the setting. Like, you have to kind of decide how based in reality you really want to be. Um, but in this case, I think the color I chose looks pretty believable. So, um, just something to keep in mind. And when you play with the lightness and darkness, obviously at a certain point, it just looks completely fake. So I try to keep it within reason of the original. That is looking decently good and decently matched with this version. In fact, look, I spent, I did a better job this time. Look at how computerized that edge looks. I go over here. I didn't, I made this completely a straight triangle, which is like kind of nice, but also kind of unrealistic. I don't know. What do you think is better? And this time it's more of a jagged edge. All right. So, um, I just want to clean up these and I should have done this before, but I want to clean up these last minute little distractions. Also, if the layers and 
and the adjustment layers give you any issues while you're trying to clean stuff up you can always if you're like if you know you're done with every layer and don't want to make changes you can go to the top layer say command a to select all and then command shift c which selects the merge or it it makes a merged copy and then command v is that merged copy so now this one has all of our data in one layer and just to show you that's copy merged and then you just paste it now like this is a flat thing to work with and we could just continue on our merry way getting rid of distractions which is comes in handy but also if you ever have to go back and change everything else like the client is like oh no I want that wall to be um, orange then you have to like ooh, all this clean up so it's not like I like to try to clean everything first if I remember but I can be very impulsive and just jump to the fun stuff so I sometimes have to cope with that okay um, last thing like I said we were going to do is I'm gonna sharpen him up a little bit and I don't know if it matters that I do this on the merged copy or the original layer but um, we're going to try it so sharpen and I have it at 80% strength which might be excessive and this is like obviously not an ideal that's too much that's looking like a bad surveillance camera footage uh, this is not ideal but it's just you know when it's being viewed on small screens it's not on a billboard I don't think anyone is going to have an issue with it and even if they do I enjoy this photo so whatever um, so yeah that's looking pretty good if we want to see where we ended up that's it and then we started here so it's not too difficult and I could spend a little more time cleaning up those distractions but we're here to show you how these colors were changed and how this was cleaned up so um, just in case you want to see the whole process through what I would do now is say command s it'll load back up in Lightroom as the photo we just edited so then you could do any last minute toning or tweaks um, and you could compare it to maybe another wall that you've colored like that one or this one and um, yeah so basically then I would just export it and we're all done so not too bad for a creative edit in under what 30 minutes and I've been talking so it was probably a lot faster than that so I hope this inspires you to get a little creative with your editing and if you enjoyed this video go ahead and hit subscribe